On this channel, Tabletop Upgrades, I make cool upgrades for board games, and usually those board games already exist, but this video is a little bit different. In this one, I'm going to be making some custom dice for the upcoming sequel to Spire's End. The game's called Hildegard, and in this envelope, Greg Favreau, the designer, has kindly sent me some prototype cards for a playthrough that I'm going to do that's hopefully going to feature in his Kickstarter campaign. So, stay tuned, because this video is a little bit different. I'm going to learn how to make some acrylic engraved and paint and filled dice and also we're going to have a first look at what's inside this envelope. Now in here is cards for the follow-up Hildegard which follows through one of the original characters in the game Hildegard and uh, she is famed in the game for having a slingshot and a ferret and uh, she's really quite different to a lot of the other characters that are kind of warrior type um, but to be honest she is one of my favourite and the art is absolutely amazing so in here are cards specific to Hildegard so let's take a look I'm excited to see because I believe in here Greg has very kindly included a, um, a promo card for the original Spire's End Ooh. So let's have a look first at the promo card. So in the original game, basically you rolled a D8 uh, to heal or clear various effects, and you got to essentially gamble with your life total to, um, to choose one of these actions. The more powerful the action, the more life you lost. So it was always a balance between doing powerful actions and effectively burning out really quickly. So that is a beautiful addition to the first game. And I think what I'll do is I will follow this video up with a playthrough of Spire's End uh, using, or starting with at least, Marin, Seer of the Grey Oaks. So onto the Hildegard cards. So in here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. And I believe there's two things I'm going to be doing with Greg. One is a, a fishing challenge, and the other is what they call a face-off, which is one of the combat type mechanisms in the new game. So the face-off will be between Hildegard and the Crows and in the game we have these shot dice which have these unique faces. Now as you can see in this thin envelope there were no shot dice and to a couple of other YouTubers Greg has sent out some prototype sticker dice and seeing as I have a laser cutter I thought it would be cool in this video to make some of the dice needed for the playthrough. So I won't go into these too much detail, but hopefully you should be able to see a bit of a flavour of the artwork. It's absolutely beautiful. I really love the uh, black and orange palette that they've gone for. So we've got a fishing challenge and we've got a face off. But there's a lovely linen finish on the cards. They seem to be amazing quality, especially considering this is a prototype. But the artwork is beautiful. And what we'll do now is get started on making some of these shot dice. So I've got myself some blank D6. Now these are supposedly 16 millimeter, although they never are. So I'm gonna make a jig to hold them in place. So I've got a repeatable place. So let's check the size. I'm expecting them to be slightly under, if anything. So that is a 15.7, sounds about right. Um, and a 15.8. So if I'm going to go for a jig, I'm going to do it at about 15.7 and I'm going to make six positions so that I can rotate the dice and put all the different die faces through. And these are what they look like. So Greg has kindly sent me the files. So I'm going to start importing these into the software and get the jig made. So I've been sent the dice faces as an Illustrator file, which I've imported into Lightburn. Now these have come in slightly smaller, about 14 and a quarter millimeters in size. I need to scale those up. So I've worked out a scaling factor and I'm scaling that uh, to an overall size of 135 outside and that should give me the correct dice symbols. So once I've scaled these I'll set up an etching profile and then I'll start doing some test runs on the sample dice. So I found a piece of scrap acrylic to form the jig and I'm uh, just setting up 
the focal distance there and then we'll run the program. So after uploading the settings to the laser engraver, ran the program, it actually cut fine, but I had a problem with my effects from burnt out the middle of the target die. So re-uploaded it with a higher DPI, 300 this time, sent it to the laser and gave it another test run. I think it increased the power, reduced the speed a little bit, so you can see it going a little bit slower, and I got a really nice finish on this one. So with the concept proved and I needed to check the orientation of the dice and to do this I just simply took a permanent marker and drew on a rough approximation of each of the symbols in each of the jig positions. Now the square masking tape didn't cut it for me so I cut some little circles which made things a little bit more consistent and then I datumed the z-axis on the laser just to check the focal length again and went about engraving the parts. This is what it looked like. It took about two minutes um, a cycle so if you don't have any large runs of these you could whip through them quite quickly now remember i'm not creating anything officially for the game this is just my own test experiment having a play around with creating acrylic dice because that's something i might want to do for other games in the future now the infill paint was just applied with acrylic with a little squeegee and i wiped it across the surface so this is the result of the uh, the infill now i pulled these off a little bit too early so i've come back a couple of days later because originally it was pulling away some of the acrylic infill. So I'm going to time lapse through this. It's been what, two days now. Um, I'll pull these off and see how they turn out. Now I'm reasonably happy with how most of these sides has turned out. I've noticed that the black ones in particular tend to um, scratch off a little bit easily like the center of this circle and that's due to the acrylic paint that I've used and on closer inspection of some infill dice that I've got from other games especially Spires and it seems to be an enamel rather than an acrylic paint so that's definitely something I'd do if I was to repeat this but I'm going to go through and uh, clean these up and the fact that I can even scratch this off with my fingernail so easily shows that perhaps acrylic paint or certainly the acrylic paint that I've used maybe isn't the one for the job but for a prototype piece the upcoming video I think this is going to work quite nicely and they do look good on camera so I'll speed through the cleanup now. Now that was a really interesting experiment it's not something I've ever done before and I certainly wouldn't be comfortable selling these in my Etsy shop I've got pretty high standards for the stuff I do sell. These are the uh, path markers and I've worked out that I've made individually 5,000 of these in the last 12 months maybe 12 and a half months and they are finished to a fantastic standard and what i do is i infill this laminate from the underside and then i um i laminate them together and the the fit and finish on that is absolutely spot on this is an infill from the top and onto an engraved surface so you've got to wipe off the surround because it never quite masks properly plus to which i think acrylic paint is not really the um the material for the job I think an enamel and maybe brushing it off with a solvent shortly after applying it is probably the way forward but for the purposes of a prototype and getting to try out these new Hildegard rules they are more than tabletop standard um, I think for now I'm going to be leaving making off acrylic dice and selling those in my shop uh, there's people who do it better and also I don't really want to get into the uh, commodity based sales of uh, making stuff just another version of something that already exists path markers are pretty unique and my next dice project because he doesn't like dice if you like tabletop games is going to be some uh, gaslands skid dice that's something i'm really looking forward to getting into look up gaslands link in the description if you haven't already seen that um, but i'm going to be using these much bigger size chunky weighty wooden dice and i'll do some wood etching and i haven't seen that kind of thing on the internet and i think that's a cool variation on uh, some of the existing dice products on there so i enjoyed the project it's not something that i'm going to be selling anytime soon but what you will see these used in is the next installment of this video which is going to be trying out the actual hildegard rules themselves and i am super excited about that so do subscribe and check the playlist um, to see the learn and play and also the playthrough of the first face-off. So I'll see you in the next one.